I see you all enjoying. That's great. Perfect. Your drinks are reloaded, refreshed. Children are in the kids' room again, playing with their iPads. <laughs> so you have one more hour of time, or I can do that. <coughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the third part of our CFC. And as we are an organization who wishes to grow, I'm sure you know the district's uh, mission, which is we build new clubs and, uh, and support mm -hmm. our clubs in achieving excellence. Which means we help every club to be sustainable, but also to grow. And to do that, we need um, PR and marketing. There is one leader I'm a big fan of in our organization, <laughs> and this is Patrick. And let me explain why. I know a lot of people who spend many, many hours per week for Toastmasters. But this guy is extremely effective. For example, he started the Discord platform for a few days. And now we have in the district a place where you can ask literally everything. And you will receive great answers. This is only one example for his great work. And that's why talking about uh, PR and club um, PR, the first name in my mind was Patrick, and I'm so happy to have you here today. The digital space is yours. Every director is for Patrick Rollman. Thank you so much, Stefan. That are very, very nice words. So I think, or I heard you uh, just heard many, many very useful informations today. So I try to keep it short and uh, interactive. So let's start and d jump in. So can you see my screen or should I s share it? Yes. You can see um, it. You can make Patrick's window uh, on the speaker view if you want to see it bigger. Everything's fine. You see what we are talking about today? I see the thumbs up. So today we talk very in general about the topic complete club PR and how you can boost your club with public relation. So what are we talking about today? First of all, I want to introduce myself who am I and why I can talk about this. Then let's define the goal of, of this meeting today. Then let's start our journey of this evening or your journey of the PR of your club. Next, we dive in into the topic of club identity. We explain or I explain what it is and why you have to define it. Next step, we talk about promotion in general and I prepared something for you. And the last one, May the Force, how you can leverage the success of your activities. First of all, who am I? My name is Patrick, I'm 30 years old. I'm, uh... ah, okay, thank you, Stefan. I'm an active member since uh, September 2019. In June 2020, I joined um, the board at my, my home club, Selbstred Münster, as VPPR. And uh, since last year, I am the area director of H4. So why can I talk about the subject? I had my own marketing agency for one and a half year and I was specializing in social media, especially showing my clients how to get visible online. And if you want, of course, you can stay in contact with me by LinkedIn, Xing or by email. What are we doing today and what is the goal of it today? At the end, you should be able to develop your own club PR plan. 
you should be able to identify the le well bleh, the relevant aspects to boost your PER. And with the knowledge of, from this workshop, it should be possible for you to get new perspectives. I especially say perspectives because before we talk about new members, we just talk about to raise the awareness for our own clubs to gain perspectives and to convert the perspectives into members. And um, as I joined, I just listened to uh, Elizabeth about the um, different goals, uh, about the different processes when I heard it correctly. So um, that would be the next part to do your own process with it. Okay, let's go on a short journey and now you have something to do. Do you have an iPad or a pen and paper? I hope so. Okay, so take your pen and paper and imagine that you have never ever heard of Toastmasters or your club. And I don't know what are your friends, colleagues, or who you ever talk about, Toastmasters, what they ask you. So, if you think how and where could people find you or find your club, what benefits do you offer? And would you send a message to your club or would you join a meeting? So let's define the actual state of analysis. Let's see where you stand at the moment. How easy it is for the possible prospectives to find you, to get in contact with you, to see on the first view what can you offer. Because what's the thing behind, behind it? When, you, when the prospective don't know, or in this case you, doesn't know what you are doing, what the benefits you offer, why should I invest my time in? So think about yourself for next five minutes, try to define or to answer these questions and after that we talk about it. So as I said, take your pen and paper and start writing. Yes, Martin. Uh, Patrick, could you uh, go back to um, show that page again? You mean this one? Yes. Thanks. Yes, of course.
So we have one minute left. So, the five minutes are over. Are you back? Some of you, I see they are back. So, who wants to present their findings? Really? No one? Okay, Udo. I can do it. Ah, or Dan Daniel. Okay. Yes, I. It's. Thank you, uh, all the presenters. It's like it's the response thing I take with me. It's specter motion and education. I love the quote I heard from a guy called Ron Solomon. It basically says that a flower is nothing more than a weed with a marketing budget. <laughs> and I think that when I look at my club, uh, when, when I look at my club, it's basically this that the flower is growing at a little bit sort of to the side. It's hard to find. Yes, we have the normal uh, uh, ways of, in, of finding new members, as I guess as most of you have, sort of social media, word of mouth, and all of that. But it's growing a little bit to the side and it's probably hard to find. And when you find it, the first impression might be that, oh, this flower doesn't feel very good. <laughs> it might be sort of a, a little rough on the surface, but when you get closer, you see sort of the lumps of gold lying beneath the petals and all the beautiful nectar that is within, uh, that you can find in, in the flower. If I didn't know a Toastmaster, I would probably be a little bit hesitant before I joined my club, but since I knew of Toastmasters before and sort of find this club, <coughs> sorry, uh, find this club, it was sort of I already knew of, of all the benefits that uh, lie beneath. But I think that we could definitely do a better job of uh, bringing all of these up to the surface. So this exercise was really helpful for me to get a state. Uh, and analysis uh, of my own club. Thank you very much, Daniel, especially for this uh, beautiful metaphor. That was really great. Um, and yeah, just let's hear about uh, Udo's experiences. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Uh, if I imagine I'm completely new for Toastmasters, I never heard much about Toastmasters. Maybe I just have an idea. And uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to know what are you doing exactly? I would like to know what are they doing exactly? Is there a benefit for me? For example, if I like to improve my English, is there a native English speaker as well I can chat with, for example? And then where, how often, how long, what day, are there photos about uh, a meeting, then I like to know all those details. And at the very end, I maybe ask for the money, what do I have to pay for? But first of all, I like to know what does it look like? What are you doing exactly? Thank you, Udo. That's the point. That's the actual state of analysis, which you can do on your own club. It is very helpful to identify the pain points you have with your marketing or with your public relation. Because as we just heard from Daniel and Udo, 
it's not that easy. In our own world, where we know Toastmasters and where we know how we can benefit from it privately or in, um, in the business context, we know that it could be very helpful. But if we never heard of it, as I said before, why should I invest my time in it? So my time is, very, is the most valuable thing I have. So, and I want, only want to use it for something that brings me a benefit. So think of this, take this exercise with you and look on your social media accounts, look on your um, pages and think that you are a prospective. And then you see and identify the pain points and then you can go on and fix it. That's the first lesson of today. So let's get deeper. Let's talk about club identity. Does anybody know what it is? Really? Great. Sorry? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about branding. That it, it, it's uh, something to do with uh, identity. Yeah, branding is part of it. That's right. Elizabeth? This is the fear. I think you want to say yeah, um, spirit in your club and identity. Yeah, that's, that's all right. But it's not the complete truth. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So let's look. What is club identity and what does it consist of? First, we have the club identity. Next, we have our target audiences inside. And then we have the club personas. So maybe you have heard of club identity more in a business context, there it's called corporate identity. But you can use this concept also for your own club. So we just talk about club identity and let's see what it is. Club identity consists of different parts. So we have our behavior, we have our communication, we have our culture, we have the design, we have the language, and we have the philosophy. That means every six aspects define who you are as a club. It's the kind of, let's get a step back Think again, you are a prospective. You visit the club the first time or you get in touch with the club the first time. What kind of communication do you use? How do you display your culture? What is the general design? Is it very formal, very business orientated? Is it very funny and entertaining? So because it refers in the next step who you want to address. So it's very important to define who you are as a club and how you want to get noticed. And the other things are also in it. We have some parts which are already comes from Toastmasters International, for example, our culture and uh, the philosophy, but we can make much more from it and define our own club. Next, let's look at target audiences. As I said before, with our club identity, 
we already define who we want in our club. For example, do we want to have kids in our clubs? Or do, you, do we want to have um, business representatives? Do we, do we want to have students in it? So that's the part we define with our club identity, who we want to address. And then we talk about the actual who. We define which are the groups we want to target. As I already said, for example, the businessmen or the students, we can define our target audience. So we can define the target audience or we can differentiate between three main points. We have the demographic factor, which can be the age, the gender, the income, income family status, profession, industry, education. It can be geographic, country, state, city, facilities, infrastructure. For example, that what we do at the moment and that possibility which Corona gives us is to join every meeting on every point of, at the world. We are not limited to our own club in our ho own home country, but we can visit a club in Sweden, for example, or in America or in South Africa or wherever you want. You can do it. So you're not very geographical um, dependent, but it could be also a strategy. If you want, if you say, okay, I'm not really into Zoom meetings. I don't want to offer it. I know that these persons I want to address are not really into online meetings. Then you are very limited to your own place. And it's not the questions if it's good or bad. It's just the question how you define your strategy. I'm sorry. So. so we are back. Last one is psychographic, which is based on the interest, activities, attitude, opinion, belief, social class and lifestyle. Very interesting, very much marketing talk, but could you tell me why it could be possible for you and your club to think about a target audience? Elizabeth. Because I think your marketing will be different according to who your target market is. If you want young professionals, then you're going to do some marketing in a certain area. But if you want to appear, um, appeal to an aging audience, then you'll go and do your marketing somewhere else. Yes, that's right, Russell. Uh, we're running a foreign language club in a country we need to fish in the right pool when we're looking for members. There's no point in us just doing publicity in Germany for an English language club. We have to be really very, very, very specific about finding people who want to speak English for some reason. Was it a question or the answer why you think about your target audience? It was meant to be a response to your question. Why does it matter? Yeah. It matters to us because we're looking for 0.4% of the population or something, maybe, maybe a bit more, 4% or something. But it's a tiny, our, our fishing pool is a tiny percentage of the total population. Yes. So we really have to get it right. Yes, that's really right. Because you have, you have power and uh, as I uh, mentioned, or as Stefan mentioned, you only have 24 hours 
and you have to use this efficiently because if you think I really don't know the word in uh, in English but if you think of your target audience for example as a photographer I have a camera everyone needs photos so everyone is my potential customer would this be a very good target audience No, no, some are shaking heads. So yes, you're right. That's not really good. If you want to address everyone, you addresses no one. I promise you. So, but if we stay on our example of the photographer, for example, I am a wedding photographer. I am very good at showing um, the emotions and the love of people who are finding together and I am very capable of taking this special moment with my camera. So if you are looking for someone who takes unique photos of your, um, of your wedding, I'm your man. Does it sound better? Yes, Anne-Marie? How or why? Why? Why can't you do that? No. Over 18 years old. Man, female, female, yes. No. To get it right, the target, target audience is to um, define who you want to address. It's not to address everyone. For example, um, I come from Münster and I just want to address, for example, the students which are between 30 and uh, 20 and 30 years old, um, which are living currently in um, Münster and want to train their rhetorical skills or the speaking skills to get a better job or to get promoted. So that could be a possible target audience. So you mean you want a club that's just uh, with the people for 30 to 40 years old? No. Maybe um, I want to refer to Elizabeth. Um, she said your marketing will, will be different and that's right because you can't address everyone at the same moment on to say in other words it's much too expensive let me give you an example for that do you read the newspapers yeah do you look at the um at the advertisements are they really suitable for you ah thank you you are not at the target group, but at the newspapers, for example, if you want to advertise in the newspapers, you try to address everyone who reads the newspapers. And the special thing about it is that you pay for everyone because the newspaper said you could probably reach 100,000 of new customers. But as you just said to me, you are not one of them. And I think there are many more. So for example, to get back to social media, if you define your target audience, you only see, or mostly only see, um, advertisements which are relevant to you. 
does it become a bit, little bit more clearer? Sorry? No, very, very, very well. Very well. Very well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think what Elizabeth maybe means is that, um, like, maybe some clubs want this to have a, like, from a demographic perspective, a rather um, limited audience, like for example, a uh, rather limited target audience, like for example, students uh, or younger people. But there are other clubs that want to be broader. There are clubs that want to have a, a good average of younger people, older people, uh, uh, male, female. So um, I think that depends a little bit, and that is. Um, that it makes it also sometimes a little bit different if you want to have this uh, rather broad audience in your Toastmasters club. It makes it more different, uh, more difficult to, to advertise because you don't want only the young people that are on social media. You also want uh, the rather older ones that don't look at that and, um, and maybe read the newspaper. So I think it's, it's, it's different uh, for, for each club or it can be different yeah. It is. Thank you. That's totally right. Um, it's completely different for each club because of many different factors. But I don't want to say that you only have one target audience. You can have as many target audiences as you want and define them at the, as you want. If you want to get broader, broader, no problem. If you want to get more focused because you are specialized in something, don't know. For example, um, cats, Cologne Advanced Toastmasters are very specialized at a certain point. So they addresses in Toastmasters only some people. So, and that's what I mean. You don't. Ah. You don't need one target audience. You also can have as many target audiences as you want. But you should define your target audience to make your marketing much more efficient. To get the persons there where they are. Okay? And Mary? Uh, for me, it can be a little bit like political party that you want some people there. Because I haven't experienced anything of that. And Toastmasters say that we should not think about religion and the color of the skin and all these things. So, yeah, but maybe. Yes, you're right. But. I stay on my point. You can't address everyone. You want to address everyone. Of course, Toastmasters is great for everyone. But not everyone wants to get to Toastmasters because of different reasons. And that's for, uh, totally okay. But if you say <laughs> it's very difficult to define the marketing message why we are attractive for a potential perspective if we say we are attractive for everyone no we are not and no your club is not your club is attractive for a very special kind of people and you can define who are these people so Let's go further. As I said before, we have our target audience and now we want to address this kind of target audience. And it don't have to be one only. It could be as many as you want if you have the um, capacity in your club to run these, 
uh, these marketing for the different audiences. So in the next step, we get deeper. We first had our club identity. We then had our target audience. And then we go deeper with our example persona. What does it mean? At our target audience, we have a very big group of people. For example, students, as I say. But when we go deeper, we want to explain uh, an example person what it is, who this person is, and where we can find it. What are their interests? So I made one for you and I call him Elvis example. He's between 35 and 44. He has a bachelor. He's on LinkedIn. His branch is marketing, his company size, communication responsibility. So I just look at a special kind of person and think who could this possible person be like? Where can I find him? What are his interests? How does he, how does he communicate? And why is it so important? As I said, I'm very much in the online world. So let's, let me refer to social media. For example, some of you, let me ask that before. How many of you are on social media? Facebook, Instagram, Xing, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever you want. I see most of you. Some are not, most of you. So, Martin, I'm very sorry, but I think you can relate as I go further. So, in social networks, we have different groups. For example, for our example persona, we have his bachelor. So we maybe can find him at groups for students. Social networks, he's on LinkedIn. So maybe he is on groups on LinkedIn. But maybe he's not only there, maybe he is also he is a managing director. Maybe he is also in groups for, um, for leadership. So now this could be a possible person who could be interested in our offer because we have something to offer to the person and we want him to check it out. Yes, Ingrid? I think that was a answer from the last question with using the social media. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Ah, okay. <laughs> so when we have our, our target group, we define how could a possible person be, where I can find him, what are his interests, and because of this mix, I know where I can find people like him. And that's very important for my marketing because at the moment, most of us say, okay, we are Toastmasters. Everyone should know us. We have a website, we have a social media, but I don't understand why we don't get new perspective, why we don't get new members. I don't, I don't understand it. It's of course, <laughs> how should I find you? Does it a little bit become clearer? Yeah. yeah we had um, members of uh, that came to Toastmasters in very different ways and have different interests. So someone to learn English, someone to learn uh, to get rid of stage fright. 
or want to lose finance or something like this. Very great. Can, yeah. yeah, I can find them in a different location, for example, in English language class. Yes. Uh, online or in a newspaper or something like this. Yes, that's right. <coughs> so, I'm sorry. Um, Stefan, did you um, write or check where they did come from? And did you write it down for, for future? No, but we hear it in, in the talk. <laughs> <laughs> or in the, in the, uh, in the table topics, uh, the, you know you will see. <laughs> Maybe it's some, some tip beside, but you can ask your current members, how did they come to Toastmasters? What are they doing there? Why are they doing there? Why are they staying? And you will get a list, I promise to you, you will get a list of points which you can use in Upfront, on your website, on your social media. And to show the benefit real persons get from your club. Okay, that was very much explaining for me. So at the moment, I want to hear a little bit from you. So please unmute your microphones. Yeah, in one of my clubs, most of the people know each other from church, it came from church. To, to uh, it's a very good example of my next question because at this moment I want to discuss with you how and where we can promote our clubs. So yeah. Stefan just, just started with the church. There are many members yeah. who know yeah. themselves from the church and bring them to your club. Um, let me ask you a question. I don't know if it's possible, but uh, could you raise awareness there? Mm -hmm. Maybe hang a flyer or something like this? Yeah. <laughs> I think um, the, the church is uh, doesn't like it. <laughs> okay. It's uh, a public relations. <laughs> Okay, but the next tip we come afterwards will be for you. I promise. Emery. I was just think, thinking about, about the backstory before. <laughs> this is a little bit yeah, funny, if you can say. But maybe bachelors want clubs with more ladies and the opposite. <laughs> okay, I, I'm very sorry. Maybe I have to explain it. Um, in uh, Germany and I think in complete Europe, we don't have um, the normal degrees as we know it. So at the moment, we only have bachelor and master's degree. So I really don't know if it was a joke or. <laughs> it, was, it, it can be anything. I mean, it can be that. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, but it's not that interesting. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You're right. So what other ways do you think we have to promote our clubs? We have a corporate club and in any meetings where we get the chance to speak, I think we try and name drop Toastmasters, drop it into the conversation, into the presentation. So people look, can ask, oh, what's that? Toastmasters, I've heard about this. What is it? Very, very great example. Steve. 
I am a member and a volunteer with a professional association that has a conference plan for later this year. And I'm thinking of suggesting that we run a speech craft project to help some of the presenters prepare. Very good example. What else do we have? Uh, if I can take the mic, um, I'm Lofa, the, the, the R of Al Jadida Toastmasters Club. I'm from Morocco. Happy to be with you guys. Very honored uh, to skip wonderful training. Um, about the promotion, uh, uh, we promote the club in uh, universities, in uh, association, as uh, the previous uh, member said. And uh, we are starting to hang in flyers. Uh, in centered languages, especially American centered languages, um, also the American schools, and uh, that's it for us because uh, we are just a one year club, so we just uh, beginning, we are just a baby, and we are trying to improve. Thank you. Thank you very much, and very good example. So, would you just um tell us your experiences how does it work to work with uh, universities or with the clubs and uh, to hand in flyers does it work uh, yes it works uh, we we did have last time the public speaking contest speech contest so uh, we did have lots of guests so we had new members and uh, it's a good way to have young population and especially we are a young club so uh, the oldest one uh, uh, is uh, 35 years old but uh, we are we are uh, very um, how can i say it we want to to target the oldest people because that's our issue very good and i uh, we can also talk about this topic maybe later on but Stefan just informed me that I only have seven minutes left, so I have to hurry on. So, this was some great examples of how we can promote our clubs. Everywhere you can go, where you've been, it could be a possible um, place to promote your club. But let's talk about The force and the greatest force you have in your club already. So let me ask you, did you know what word of mouth marketing is? And Marie is smiling. Yes. yes, 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 some of you already know. And I also ask you, would you rather trust a friend or the advertising? Friend. Friend, yes. I know it's a rhetorical question, but I think it shows the point. Because how does it work? Your greatest resource, your greatest force in your club, do, you have it already, are your current members. As Stefan, um, Stefan said, most of them know themselves from churches. They visit a club meeting, say, oh, well, that was great. They go to their friends, to their colleagues and said, oh, yesterday I was at the Toastmasters club. Toastmasters, what? Yes, let me explain it to you. Bam, you're in. So, it's much more likely that a friend when you post it on social media, for example, yesterday I was at Toastmasters and uh, I hold my own speech or held my own speech. Very effective. Why? It's much more likely that the friends or the colleagues will see their post and react to it. And the best part of it is uh, I don't know who said it before, but a Toastmasters? I've never heard of it. What is it? And bam, you're in. Another great example for it is it's very cost effective because it doesn't cost you a penny. It's 
only to inform your members that they should promote the benefit they have from Toastmasters, from the work in your club, to share it on social media. And yet think of the possible members or the members you already have in your club and think of the possible network you have access to. And it doesn't cost you a cent. Just let me share my own experiences. I made literally this, what I explained before. I post on social media how to plan and uh, do meetings effectively in time. I have some, some mentions on it and some comments and was okay, it wasn't really, it was just a post. Next day, I was at my, at my work and I get a phone call. And there was a, also a person I'm working with and he asked, oh, yesterday you posted something on LinkedIn, you said how to plan and do meetings on time. How is this even possible? I said, I can tell you, I learned it from Toastmasters. Toastmasters, what it is, what is it? Bam, I'm in. And then I can explain it. And to refer back when I started my presentation, it's not about getting members in the first step. It's getting prospective to raise awareness for your club, to raise awareness for Toastmasters, to get prospectives who visit your club meetings, who visit you online. And then when they see the benefits, they will become members. I promise. So seven minutes, uh, two minutes left. I'm ready. Very fast, very much information. Thank you. And uh, so do me a favor, please, for me, before we uh, get back to the questions. Um, I would love your feedback. If you liked my workshop, please visit the QR code or I can also get a link to you. Let's give me a second. So I would love to hear from you that you give me a feedback. Very short. Tell me what you think about the workshop, if it works for you, if you can get from it. And I would be very pleased. And of course, all of you who give me a feedback, I will provide a short resource list where you can get more information and get more resources for your work on social media, especially, um, for example, the graphics, but also my, my latest slide shares uh, to the topic club identity and uh, micro influencing, which are two topics we are talking today very shortly. So thank you very much. I give back to Stefan or he said, I have time for questions. I don't know. Stefan, what do we have? Ooh, 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 ooh. Dear Patrick, first, thank you so much for the amazing workshop and so many insights. Ladies and gentlemen, it's really good to see uh, these professional advisors. Feel free to use them if you wish. As we